Good day, good day, good day. Welcome to Drew's Book Reviews. Today we're talking a whole series, The Shadow Campaigns by Django Wexler. This is a series review. Stay tuned, that's coming right up here on Drew's Book Reviews. All right, so let's talk about The Shadow Campaigns by Django Wexler. Now, before we get into my series review, here, make sure you hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. You could also join me down on my Discord and my Bookstagram, which I will have linked below. So let's talk about shadow campaigns. And actually, also as a reminder, I do post videos every Tuesday and Friday. So if you want to know when the next video is out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification. All right, so let's get into the shadow campaigns by Django Wexler. So this is a five book series that I actually started with the hardcover edition, starting with the thousand names. And this series goes on to cover five more books with the Shadow Throne being the next one in the series, followed up by The Price of Valor. After that, we have Guns of Empire, followed up by the series conclusion, The Infernal Battalion. So I actually completed a reread of this entire series last year before I finished up Guns of Empire and The Infernal Battalion. So these are some fantastic books that I personally enjoyed. Now, the series as a whole was not perfect. There were definitely some things within the series that I did find to be a bit of a flaw with the series and the writing. But just to kind of get the premise of this series, The Shadow Campaigns is based in a world that's kind of a Napoleonic inspired fantasy. So it's kind of guns, military fantasy with magic built into the world. Now, the interesting thing with this series is that the magic system is built around this idea of demonic possession. And so you obtain your magical abilities through being possessed by demons. And each, each different type of demon grants you different abilities or magical powers. It could be anything from things like an infernivore, which allows you to devour and destroy other demonically possessed individuals or devour their demons. One might grant you immortality, Might one might grant you super amazingly quick speed or the ability to heal from other or heal other people but not necessarily yourself. And so there's a good mix of different types of demon and of course the ultimate bad demon is the beast which has the ability to possess multiple people and basically create an army through possession of individuals. So there's definitely a lot going on here with the different types of magic and each demon granting different abilities throughout the series. Which is just a really awesome premise, I think, for a actual magic system. I hadn't seen that before in any other books or book series. As far as demonic possession goes, granting the ability for magical purposes, properties, and the ability to do these, this type of magic. So I thought that was a really cool idea and a really cool concept in terms of how the magic system works in this world. Our story generally follows a few different people. Uh, you got Cre Queen Resenia, who herself is demonically possessed. I won't say what type of possession she has or what her ability is, because I don't want to spoil it for you if you do choose to read this series. And we also have Giannis Bet Velnik, who is this military general who seems unstoppable. He is virtually invincible on the battlefield and he is consistently getting victories. Nothing can ever seem to beat Giannis Bet Valnik. Everything he does seems to result in victory, but nobody understands him or what his motives are. And then we've also got, we've also follow Kernis Marcus Duvar. He is uh, basically, he is in the military. He's one of Giannis Bet Valnik's followers. And he is kind of torn between his military obligations and obligations to his country and the crown. And then we've got Winter Erenglass. She is a soldier in the military who feels she has to hide her identity and her gender lest she be kicked out of the military because of the stig stigma attached to being a woman in the military. So th those are our basic characters as far as what their roles are within the, this world that has been created by Django Wexler in the Shadow Campaigns. And another key player in this is the Church of Elysium and their Penitent Damned. The Penitent Damned are people that basically the, the Elysium Church, they view demonic possession and magic as a source of evil and powers from hell. 
And so they are on, they are determined to wipe out possession from the world and to destroy magic of, of any kind. But they employ a group of people called the Penitent Damned. These are people who voluntarily damn themselves to eternal torment and hell by taking on demonic possession in order to be tools and agents of the Elysium Church to hunt down other demons and destroy them. So they kind of play a key role in the conflicts that result and brew within this world and this overall story which has been created by Django Wexler. So what I do have to say is I absolutely love the concept behind these books. I love the concept behind the story. I love how the magic plays in and the whole idea of demonic possession. That being said, there are some flaws that I do find with this this book series. One of the flaws that I see is, particularly with the character of Winter Ironglass. Now she feels that she has to hide the fact that she's a woman in this army, in this military. And so all throughout it, every character that ever finds out who she is, there's only really one character that reacts, what I would say overtly negative to this idea. I mean, Marcus Devar is kind of like, eh, doesn't like the idea, but he doesn't like go crazy mad with this idea there's only one character that does and well that's dealt with pretty quickly every other character that finds out winter's true identity as a woman and she's been hiding has been accepting of it has been just fine with it so winter is always worried about being discovered as a woman and yet her worries never attain fruition none of the consequences that she fears actually happens um Maybe that's not a flaw, but it's just kind of something that's like, why is this in here if this isn't, doesn't, if the reality that she fears doesn't seem to be that strongly reflected in many of her interactions with the other characters within this series. So that kind of drove me a bit up the wall. But again, I'll leave that up to you as the reader to decide if that's a flaw or not. It's just kind of one of those things that kind of like, why? Why, why is this an issue when... The characters in your book don't seem to respond to it as if it's an issue. The only one that ever worries about it is Winter. One of the other things that kind of bothered me, well, I'm not sure, it's hard to say. One thing that this series is really strong on, and it's got that LGBTQ representation very strongly within this book. But the way it was done kind of drove me up the wall a little bit. It seems that every female character in this book series, except for one, and I'm not going to say who, but every female character in this book, except for one, was essentially gay. And this is reflected in that all the female characters that were gay happened to also be in the military. So it kind of is presented in this way that women in the army are gay. <laughs> uh, and it's not every woman in this army that is gay, but every character that is a woman that's in the, is gay, except for one, and the one that isn't gay isn't in the military and all the gay ones are and the reverse is kind of true every male character in this book series is completely straight with the exception of one and that male character doesn't happen to be in the military <laughs> the one that is gay is not in the military so just the representation just seemed really skewed and unbalanced to me in with respect to lgbtq representation now i'm all for that kind of representation in books. In fact, I think we need more better representation of that to more accurately reflect the reality of the world in which we live within our stories. I just didn't feel like that was done very well within this book series because so many of the characters seem to go into this stereotype. The lesbian in the army and the gay guy who doesn't want to be in the macho army. <laughs> and it just, the re representation there just didn't feel well done essentially and honestly i got kind of tired of seeing that within this book series as a whole that being said i do think the characters are done i think that the characters definitely have their trials their emotional struggle that they've had to deal with for the tragedies that they have had to deal with throughout their life within this series and overall i do think the book series is a good series and i did enjoy it and if that should feel like that military fantasy the napoleonic fantasy military within the mix there if you enjoy that kind of thing then definitely i would recommend reading this series not perfect by any means but it's definitely not a bad series on a whole and overall i absolutely enjoyed this series and i would recommend it if you enjoy that type of fantasy and the demonic possession for the magic system itself is just probably my favorite aspect of this entire series for the shadow campaigns i highly recommend this if you're into that kind of thing but keeping in mind, of course, like I said, there are some things that I did find a bit flawed and I think could have been done better 
or more effectively in a more balanced way. But when all said and done, great series. I enjoyed it. And I'm sure if you like that kind of fantasy, you will enjoy it as well. So those are just my thoughts on the Shadow Campaigns as a whole. So, you know, let me know what you think. Have you read the Shadow Campaigns? Have you not read it? Does this make you want to read it? Let me know in the comments down below. Or join me on my Discord. Let me know there as well. You could also follow me on my Bookstagram, which will be linked below. And there you have There are my thoughts on the Shadow Campaigns by Django Wexler. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. And, as always, until next time... Keep on reading. Bye.